as Nicole said, my name is Judith Boyle. Now, Paul Randazzo, who has been the event supervisor of Rockhound for several years, has had to step back this year. Uh, I've coached this event many times, so they've asked me to handle it in his absence. Uh, for those of you that competed in this event before, I'm planning on running it almost exactly like Paul did. So if you have been here before, this is going to seem really familiar to you. Um, let's get the presentation started. Give me a second here. Oh, you want to watch this with me? Excuse me? Oh, uh, please mute your microphones. All, um, all of the guests, please make sure you're muted. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen with you guys. Okay, I hope everybody can see that. And as we've said a couple of times already, this is Rock Hound 2022. And I'm going to be carrying, covering several topics with you. Uh, the event descriptions, station descriptions, some of the topics that you might be questioned on. Uh, give you a little bit of information to get you started. Some coaching tips and talked about making tests and making a chart some competition strategies, and some resources. Okay, so I forgot to put this one on the first slide, but I do want to mention something about the rules before we get started. Now, the rules are posted on the Science Olympiad website at macombso.org. I would recommend that every now and then go back and check the rules to see if there have been any changes in them. This event usually doesn't have any changes, but you can never be sure. So please go check. Another recommendation I have for you is to revisit the website after you've been working with your team for a while. When you become more familiar with the term, it's uh, a lot easier to make sure that you really understand what to go for. And if you have a question, Go to the FAQ, your yeah, yeah. questions section on the website, submit it. Most of, I shouldn't say most, there are a lot of questions that have been archived on this site. And your question may already have been answered, but if it isn't, please submit it and we will get back to you pretty quickly. So let's move on now. So the event description. The event consists of a one or two person team. The team will be asked to identify rocks and minerals and to answer questions about geological properties. The team can only bring pencils and one page measuring eight and a half by 14 inches for their chart. They can write on both sides though. The event is 30 minutes and consists of about 20 stations. The time allowed at each station is about one minute. So more on the description. This year's focus is on igneous rocks and rock forming minerals. That does not mean that you should overemphasize them. There are only five rocks and minerals that have been added. The three added rocks are rhyolite, diorite, and gabbro. And the two added minerals are hornblende and olivine. So you can see in the overall scope of things, they're, they're not overly emphasized in the rocks and minerals you need to know. So the test will cover all rocks and minerals fairly equally. Teams will be required to identify only those rocks and minerals listed in the rules. Now, there is a sort of caveat here. It is possible that I may put a rock or a mineral out as on one of the stations and ask them questions about physical properties that that rock or mineral exhibits, but they will not be asked to identify that rock or mineral. They will only be asked to identify characteristics that they should know from their studies. 
Okay, so identification of rocks and minerals. Um, that's going to be the biggest part, I think, of the test, because even though it may not be the bulk of the questions, if you do miss the identification, you will miss all of the other questions about that rock or mineral. Now, the rock and mineral characteristics, some of them are color, which is pretty obvious, streak, which is the color of the mark that a rock or mineral, uh, sorry, that a mineral will leave on a streak plate. Luster, which is the way it reflects light. Specific gravity or density, which is how heavy it is in relation to its size. Relative hardness, so we're going to be using the Mohs scale. Reaction to hydrochloric acid, which a lot of rocks and minerals will fizz. I shouldn't say a lot, many will fizz when it's exposed to hydrochloric acid. So that's something they should know. Crystal shape, which is the way the crystals grow naturally on a mineral. Texture and special properties. And some of the special properties could be things like, does it fluoresce? Is it a good conductor? Is it a good insulator? Another question type question you can be asked is about processes that form rocks and the environments in which they are formed. So some of the processes could be erosion, heat or pressure, or possibly river transportation. And the environments could be things like shallow seas, oceans, or deserts. Okay, so I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of information just to get you started here. So first of all, I'm gonna talk about minerals. Minerals are pure, naturally occurring crystalline solids with distinct chemical and physical properties, composition, and atomic structure. And what that's telling you is that every piece of fluorite on the planet has got the same compositions and properties as every other piece of fluorite. Uh, the properties that I spoke about earlier, the color streak and all that, they'll remain in cons consistent in all specimens of the same mineral. And I don't think the, I don't think I addressed cleavage on the other slide. Cleavage is the way a mineral naturally splits along a plane. OK, so here's some information about rocks. Uh, rocks are made of minerals. And I use the cookie analogy where I say, Let's make a chocolate chip cookie. So the chocolate chips and the flour and the butter and the sugar and the eggs, they're all minerals. You mix them together, you bake them, and you get a cookie. And a cookie is a rock. Uh, three classes of rocks are igneous, sedimentary, and metamorphic. Igneous rocks are produced when magma, molten rock, cools and crystallizes, either at volcanoes on the surface, then it's lava, or while melted rock is still inside the crust, then it's still magma. Sedimentary rocks are produced by erosion acting on existing rocks, producing sediments, Then those sediments are transported and reformed into other rocks. And metamorphic rocks form when rocks are subjected to high heat, high pressure, or some combination of these factors. Now, rocks are dead, I'm sorry, excuse me, Rocks are defined by the minerals that they contain and the ratios of those minerals. For example, the main minerals in granite are feldspars and quartz. These minerals make up about 80% of all granites. And sometimes these minerals can give you insight into how the rock was formed. Okay, we're gonna go over some coaching tips. Again, I said earlier, the identification is the most important part of the test. You need to get the identification right to get the rest of the questions right. So get your team physical samples. Since identification is so important, if at all possible, you need to get your hands on actual samples. It really makes a difference 
when the teams can touch specimens and see for themselves the properties that they're reading about. Many of the schools will have collections from previous years somewhere in their buildings. So ask around. And if you can't get from some from the school, you can go to the Science Olympiad page. We still have a few rock kits available for purchase and you can find them under the quick start kits. Make tests. Yeah, make a lot of tests. They don't have to be long. They don't have to be complicated. Set up two or three stations with a few samples and ask questions with a time constraint. Again, this helps acclimate them to the day of the test. They know what a minute feels like. So the first time they walk in there and they get that minute call, they're not freaking out because they had no idea how long it would last. Um, make up games. We do Rock Town Jeopardy. Uh, we've done Hangman. There's another one I do where I will think of a rock or a mineral and I'll ask them to identify it from clues that I give them. I uh, usually start with something very general and then get more specific with each clue. So the clues would start with like a point value of five and with each new clue, the point value would go down. So that gives them a way to compete with each other and they like trying to get it really quick. Uh, sorting exercises. So pick a few specimens and a criteria and ask them to sort them accordingly. It could be a family. It could be as simple as taking a bunch of rocks and saying sort them for igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic. Uh, you could sort them by streak if they're minerals. You could sort them by cleavages. Pretty much anything you choose will give them an edge. Okay, make flashcards. What I like about flashcards is that when they make their own flashcards, they're reinforcing the information that they've learned. So not only does it give them a way to practice with these flashcards, but it also helps them learn the material while they're making these flashcards. Now, have them understand why. That, what I, what I mean by that is, if they give you an answer, whether it's correct or not, ask them why they've answered that way. This way you get to pinpoint what it is they're understanding or not understanding. You also get to see if they're just guessing or they really know why they're answering, if they answer correctly. Okay, making tests. Again, like I said before, test a lot. Just whenever you can, even if it's one or it's 10, make a lot of tests. Uh, try to do one every coaching ses session. Uh, another one that works the same way that flashcards do is you have students make tests for each other. Again, you're they're reinforcing the information while they're making the test and they're learning how to ask. Oh, that's not quite the way I'm going to say. They're learning what's important about these samples. Again, when you're testing, use a time limit. Uh, put a few specimens at each station. That way you can make them compare different specimens with certain questions. Uh, ask more questions than just for an identification and set up a pattern. So what I mean by that is if you can get the room and make like five stations, but set them up in a certain pattern of movement so they get used to moving from station to station and they get to used to moving in the correct manner. Okay, so making the chart. What should go on the chart? Judith, I, we, yes. Judith we are we approaching are our 10 minute mark, okay? Like 10 minutes left. Okay. We're, we're getting close. What okay. should go on the chart? Uh, these are the things that uh, 
It's easier to look up than to memorize. Make the chart themselves for the same reason that we talked about everything else. You make it yourself, you learn it better. Have them practice with the chart because the faster that they can find the information that they need, the more time they'll have to answer other questions. And practice with the chart to find out which team member is more comfortable with looking up information. The answers will be recorded on zip grade sheets. Please make sure they know how to fill the bubbles in correctly. At each station, the team will find a box with the samples in it. There will be about five questions at each station. Questions will be multiple choice, true or false. Each question will have a value between one or three, three being the hardest. Uh, as each team enters the room, they'll go to a station. At each station, there'll be a box. You won't start that station until I tell them to open the box and they'll find the question for that station attached to the inside of the lid. The specimens will be labeled. This is very important. Teams will probably not start with question number one. Make sure that when they start that box, that they know that the number of the question they're answering is and match it up to the Scantron. When the time is up, I'll tell them to replace the lid and move to the next station. That's a picture of a station box, a sample box rather. Okay, work to the team member's strengths. Find out who's best at what and give them assignments that way. Tell them not to waste time arguing, to answer every question. There is no penalty for guessing. Don't leave anything behind like their chart or their pencil and don't take the specimens with them. And here's a list of resources. The internet, there's a couple listed here that are pretty good, um, your school, see if they're binders from previous years, and a workshop. I'm giving a workshop at the MISD in February. Due to the COVID protocols at the MISD, the workshop had to be restructured. Instead of the workshop running over four nights, there'll be now two two-session workshops. These dates you can find on the website. Registration is required. Only team members and one adult will be allowed in the room. If you have previously registered for this, please, you'll need to do it again. Okay. Um, ah, excuse me. Okay. Let me turn my camera back on. All right. Are there any questions from anybody? OK, we are now opening the floor for questions from our guests. You can type it into the chat or you can select the little hand icon and raise your hand and you will be able to ask it yourself. Um, I seen a OK, here we go. Uh, will we have access to this PowerPoint? Actually, um, I will pipe in and answer this question. Yeah. Uh, the, these sessions are recorded and you will be able to view these later. Um, uh, they will be accessible from our website from the Rockhound event page. OK, we have oh another question. Can we get these slides? Yes. Um, yes, the, the again, this, this will be available on the Rockhound um, event page. Uh, OK, Judith, here's a question from uh, Danielle. It says, what was the chart? I feel like I'm missing something, some context about this. OK. Uh, each team is allowed to bring in one sheet of paper, which is eight and a half by 14. They're allowed to write on either side. Now on that chart, you can put any information that they want, any information that they feel they need. Uh, I, rec I recommend that they make it, but I think you should keep an eye on it to make sure that it's going to make sense to them. Yes, so, so there's a there's a yeah. few questions about these charts. So. They're asking, is it basically like a cheat sheet? Can you yes. use one side or both sides? One, both sides, and it is a cheat sheet. You can put anything on there you want. You don't want to let it get too busy 
Because remember, they've only got one minute at the station. So if they're trying really hard to find stuff because they've got a mess, they're going to run out of time. So make sure they keep it as neat as possible and really only put things in there that they think they're going to need or that, you know, like say they don't remember the cleavage of feldspar. They can go right to that and look it up. And definitely I would put the densities on it and I would put the hardnesses on it because they don't need to memorize all those numbers. That's something you can look up very quickly. That answer everybody on that one? Yes, yep. Okay. We have another question from Jenny. Okay. It says the, the rocks listed in the rules are the ones we should be studying, correct? Yes, make sure you have this year's rules, but yes, those are the ones you should be studying. All right, does anybody have any other questions? The little hand icon is at the top of the screen and that looks like a hand. You can select that to raise your hand. Or you can type it in the chat. There are a lot of resources on our Macomb um, yes. website. On, on the Rock Hound page, you'll find a lot of answers to the questions as well. Uh, yes. Okay, we have a Christian White. Uh, Christian, you may unmute yourself and you can ask your question. Thank you. Um, so just to kind of again spare, specify, so the, no, the rocks that are mentioned on the um, website that we're supposed to be studying, but is there still open option for other rocks for us to know? No, no, no. Okay. What I said was I can put something on the test that is not on the list, but I'm only going to ask them about something they know, like what's the cleavage of this rock? It's something they'll be able to look at and know. They don't have to know the rock to know the cleavage. Okay. <laughs> Which, okay, uh, let's, I'll, let's I'll do it this in there. way. Um, <laughs> I'll pick one that's, that's a little more obvious since you guys haven't started this yet. Um, so when you're looking at igneous rocks, by the size of the crystals, you can tell whether a rock has crystallized very, very quickly or very slowly. So I may put a rock on there that they don't necessarily know how to identify, but if they look at it and say it has really big crystals, I may ask them, did this rock cool quickly or slowly? Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so I won't ask them what that is. I will just say, did it do this? Okay. Minerals, when you get in it, you'll you'll understand a little better. Yeah, I should have gone with cleavage. That, that was not a good one to go with. Sorry, that was my fault. On me. Okay. okay. Yes, they're only required to know the rocks that are on that sheet. Yes. Sometimes when they're doing like an identification, say you'll have a rose quartz mineral and maybe you'll have another one that they don't recognize and then the question might be you know which specimen is the rose quartz specimen a or specimen b so they're only going to be able to identify the ones that they know so they might throw in another specimen that's unknown um kind of just more as a challenge does that make sense that makes sense thank you very much for that clarification yes all right do we have any other questions see here we have a Shannon Shannon you may unmute yourself and ask the question hi so how many questions are there going to be that they're um, going to be asking the kids it's going to be about a hundred maybe a hundred and two maybe ninety eight but it's going to be around 100 and there'll be 20 stations. And they have one minute to answer those they questions? They have one minute. Trust me, it can be done. It seriously can be done. It sounds short, but it, it really can be done. All right, another question from Jenny. Can we see any sample questions from past years? There should be some old tests 
that were written by the practice tournament supervisors on the website. Yes, you can view you can view previous tests from previous years on the website. All right. Um, from Anissa, how do we know if we need to re uh, pre register for the workshop in February? Is that supposed to be pre register or re register? Re register. OK. Did you if you registered previously, you do need to go back in and register again because we've changed. Instead of four sessions now, there are going to be two sets of two sessions. So go into the website and it'll allow you to re-register. Okay, uh, another question from Jamie. You may unmute yourself and ask the question. Hi, uh, my question is about the cheat sheet. Um, sure. Does it have to be handwritten or they can they type it? Oh yeah, they can type it. Okay, just checking, thank you. Yeah, no problem. OK, um, OK, uh, from Christina, is there a deadline? I'm assuming this is for the workshop. That's that's I'm, I'm a, I, I, Nicole, am assuming this question is regarding the workshop. Well, the first workshop is February the 1st. So as long as we have room, you can register. Up until then. OK, thank you. We, we don't appear to have any other questions yet, so we um, we can take a couple more questions if anybody has anything. All right. Well, while we're waiting to see if any more questions come up, this is my first time doing this, so I appreciate all your attention and for giving Anything that I might have skipped over or missed. Uh, I hope we have a good season. It could be fun. And believe me, it's 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 achievable. It sounds like a lot, but it's achievable. Uh, there is another question. Sure. And it says, do we know if three three slash five, which I'm assuming third through fifth competition is going to occur? Do you mean like no, a practice? No, I, I actually mean the March March fifth competition that was for Chippewa. It's it's supposed to be. It's still. Um, we're still. At least I was not aware of whether or not they it was a decision that it was going to happen. Okay, that I'm not sure of. Nicole, do you know? Um, currently, I am not. I can't answer that right now either. Yeah. I would tell Please. you to check the website because. The website will have it before we know it. There are there's um there's just things that are ever evolving. So yeah. as far as I was aware, there was still going to be a practice tournament. Um, but to answer this question further, just uh, please revisit the website or you'll hear from um, John Ogden and he'll probably send out more information um, just because we're unsure of the circumstances going forward with the recent, you know, surge and um, COVID positive cases. Could you at least comment on what the pre tournament would be like? Yes, yes. Um, Judith, would you like to handle that? Um, and what a practice tournament is like? Okay. Usually, yeah, practice tournament is basically a mini event. The same rules apply, a mini final competition. The same rules apply. Um, you will, they will, they will do exactly the same thing as what they're expected to do in the final tournament. They will go to a station. They will look at the boxes. They will have the same time limits. The, I'm going to be writing the tests for those. There's not going to be anything different than what you'll see in the other events in the uh, final tournament. Um, I don't know exactly what. If that answers your question or not. So a it practice, does. It does. OK, OK, good, good. I was going to say a practice tournament. We consider them practice tournaments because it's almost like a run through for the students yeah. for the first time. 
to kind of get an idea of what you know the testing the stations the the boxes the they gain the um they become familiar with it so that way when they move on to the tournament they've already had the experience and kind of know what to expect yeah it's a dress rehearsal yes anybody have anything else nope it doesn't seem like it okay well okay Thank you everybody again for being patient with me. It was it's a little weird doing this the first time. I'm usually on that side. You uh, did great, Judith. Pat on the back. Yes. All right. Thank okay. you. Have a great afternoon.